Fatal Love Affairs, True Crime Stories, written by Elam Gorishi. Dot in the picturesque town of Cedar Grove, where nights were painted with the serene glow of a star-filled sky, there lived a girl named Leah. Her existence, seemingly draped in the simplicity of small-town life, was enriched by her unique perspective and experiences. Leah's upbringing, alongside her younger sister, was a montage of happy, everyday family moments, imbued with a sense of closeness and warmth. This nurturing environment shaped Leah into a figure of responsibility and empathy, someone who seemed to bring a touch of extraordinary to the otherwise ordinary. At high school, Leah was known for her vibrant spirit as a cheerleader, her energy infectious, bringing joy and motivation to those around her. Yet, Leah's interests reached far beyond the school's cheering squad. She was deeply enamored with the mysteries of the night sky. Astronomy was not just a hobby, it was a passion that lit up her world. Her room resembled a mini-observatory, filled with celestial charts, miniature replicas of planets and spacecraft, and her most treasured possession, a telescope. Through it, she journeyed across the cosmos, her curiosity and wonder as boundless as the universe itself. However, beneath the calm expanse of Leah's starlit pursuits, there lay subtle undercurrents of intrigue and mystery. These would soon draw her into an unexpected journey, as intricate and vast as the constellations she adored. It all started on an evening that seemed like any other, under the watchful eyes of the stars that twinkled above Cedar Grove. Leah's sister, Emily, was a vibrant contrast to Leah's more contemplative nature. As a rising star in the local news network of Cedar Grove, Emily's life was a whirl of breaking stories, late-night events, and a ceaseless social buzz. Her career as a news anchor had given her a platform not only to inform but to be at the heart of the town's happenings. Emily's world was one of constant motion, a stark difference from Leah's steadier, more introspective orbit. Emily often tried to draw Leah into the pulsating nightlife that she adored. She believed that Leah, with her striking personality and intelligence, deserved to be more than just a bystander in the dance of life. Emily's attempts, however, often met with Leah's polite but firm resistance. Leah preferred the depths of meaningful conversations to the fleeting connections of the club scene. Their bond, despite these differences, was unbreakable. Emily was not just Leah's sister but her confidant, her grounding force in a world that often seemed too superficial. Emily admired Leah's depth, her ability to see beyond the surface, and often turned to her for advice and perspective. It was in this world of contrasts and similarities, of starry nights and city lights, that Leah found herself navigating her path. The gym, a place of physical challenge and personal growth, became a catalyst for change in her life. Here, amidst the clanking of weights and the rhythm of treadmills, Leah met Jamal. Jamal's entry into Leah's life was as unexpected as a shooting star. His presence promised to add a new dimension to her world, a possibility that Leah had never seriously considered. Yet, here he was, a new character in Leah's story, marking the beginning of a chapter yet to be written. The encounter between Leah and Jamal at the gym had sparked something that neither had anticipated. It was a connection that resonated deeply with Leah, leading her to confess to her sister Emily, I feel like I've been waiting for someone like Jamal all my life. It was as though Jamal was the missing piece in Leah's carefully balanced universe, complementing her in ways she hadn't imagined possible. Jamal was a man who carried himself with an air of quiet confidence. He was a general practitioner, respected in his profession, known for his compassion and skill. His handsome features and impeccable dress sense were mere accents to his charismatic personality. Like Leah, he was social, but there was a depth to his sociability. Those who knew him said his presence made any gathering more enjoyable. His zest for life was evident in his love for travel. He had a way of making every moment count, every journey an adventure, and Leah found herself eagerly swept up in this new whirlwind of experiences. They shared a common love for learning, and their conversations often danced between topics, from the mysteries of the stars to the complexities of human nature. Despite their blossoming love, Leah's parents harbored reservations. 
They were concerned about the significant age gap, Kamal was in his late 40s, while Leah was only in her late 20s. To Leah's parents, Walden and Linda, this difference seemed too vast, a gap not easily bridged by love alone. They worried about the challenges it might bring in the future. Adding to their concerns was Jamal's past. He had been married once before, a relationship that had ended in divorce. He had a son from that marriage, a boy who lived with his mother in another country. Leah's parents feared that these complexities from Jamal's past might cast shadows on the couple's future. Yet, love has a way of transcending doubts and fears. Leah and Jamal's bond was unshaken by these concerns. They understood each other in a way that went beyond the superficialities of age and past experiences. Their commitment to each other grew stronger, culminating in a decision to marry. The wedding of Leah and Kamal was a beautiful affair, a celebration of their love and the journey they were about to embark on together. It was a fusion of their worlds, under the approving gaze of the stars that Leah so loved. In the years following their marriage, Leah and Jamal built a life together that was the envy of many in Cedar Grove. They purchased a luxurious house, a testament to their success and shared taste. The house, with its elegant design and lush gardens, was more than a dwelling, it was a symbol of their love and achievements. Their prosperity extended to their choice of vehicles, each owning a car that was not just a means of transportation but a reflection of their personalities. However, it was the quaint cottage by the lake they bought for summer vacations that held a special place in their hearts. It was their escape, a haven where they could relish the tranquility of nature and each other's company. For Leah, this life was like a dream materialized. She had a fulfilling career, a loving husband, and a home that was a cocoon of comfort and joy. Her family, initially hesitant about Jamal, now saw the undeniable happiness he brought into her life. The bond between Jamal and Leah's parents, Walden and Linda, had evolved from cautious acceptance to genuine affection. Their shared love for Leah was the bridge that connected them, and with time, they grew to appreciate Jamal for the devoted partner he was. Over the years, the couple became a paradigm of love and mutual respect in Cedar Grove. Their relationship was a blend of passion, understanding, and a deep friendship that stood the test of time. Friends and acquaintances often looked to them as a perfect example of a loving, successful couple. Eleven years whisked by, a period marked by happiness and a life well lived. Leah and Jamal's journey together was a testament to the power of love, commitment, and shared dreams. The day was a typical winter Monday in Cedar Grove, with the sky a dull, overcast gray. However, the normalcy was shattered and the head of the company where Leah worked as a sales manager made an unsettling call to Emily, Leah's sister. He expressed concern that Leah hadn't shown up for work, hadn't informed anyone, and was not answering her phone. This was entirely out of character for Leah, known for her professionalism and punctuality. Emily, feeling a surge of worry, immediately tried calling Jamal, but there was no response. Hours passed, and both Leah's and Jamal's phones were switched off. Panic began to set in. Emily and her father, Walden, were deeply troubled, it was unlike Leah to be unreachable. Linda, Leah's mother, recalled her conversation with Leah on Saturday. Leah had mentioned her plans to join Jamal at their lake house. Leah's words echoed in Linda's mind, Jamal had to go to the lake house on Friday night. One of our neighbors called him about a burst pipe. Leah had explained that she couldn't accompany Jamal right away as she had arranged for a cleaner to tend to their home over the weekend. Jamal had called on Saturday, saying he would have to stay at the lake house until Sunday night. Leah had told her mother about her plan to surprise Jamal by joining him on Saturday night after finishing the house cleaning. But since then, there had been no word from either Leah or Jamal. By Monday night, with worry turning into fear, Emily, Walden, and Linda decided they couldn't wait any longer. They set out for the two-and-a-half-hour drive to the lake house, a journey filled with anxiety and dread. 
The silence of unanswered calls weighed heavily on them, each mile bringing them closer to an uncertain and potentially alarming discovery. Upon arriving at the lake house, Emily, Walden, and Linda were met with an unsettling and eerie scene. The cold, foggy weather seemed to mirror their growing apprehension. Leah's car was parked outside, but there was no sign of Jamal's vehicle. The absence of his car added an immediate layer of mystery to the situation. Emily, with a trembling hand, unlocked the door using her spare key. They stepped inside. The house's usual warmth and welcoming atmosphere now replaced by a sense of foreboding. In the kitchen, they found candles on the bar, some still with melted wax, an indication that they had been left burning unattended. This was uncharacteristic of Leah, who was meticulous about such things. Scattered around the floor were numerous wet towels, presumably used to deal with the aftermath of the reported pipe burst. While this explained the towels, it did little to alleviate their concern about Leah and Jamal's whereabouts. Leah was not one to leave a mess behind, especially not something as dangerous as a lit candle. The whole scenario was deeply troubling. Emily, driven by a mix of fear and urgency, called the police to report Leah and Jamal missing. However, the police's response was less than reassuring. They suggested that it was not unusual for adults to spontaneously take off for a few days, especially a couple. They advised waiting a week before treating their disappearance as a serious concern. This lack of immediate action from the authorities was frustrating, but Emily and her parents knew something was amiss. Leah and Jamal's absence, under such mysterious circumstances, was highly out of character for them. The family was left to grapple with their fears, imagining various scenarios, each more worrying than the last. The lake house, once a symbol of relaxation and escape, now stood as a silent witness to a perplexing mystery. The unanswered questions hung heavily in the air, where were Leah and Jamal, and what had transpired in this tranquil retreat to cause their sudden disappearance? Emily's role as a well-known television presenter in Cedar Grove became crucial in the search for her sister Leah and brother-in-law Jamal. Frustrated by the initial lack of urgency from the police, Emily leveraged her public platform, broadcasting the mysterious circumstances on TV and her social media channels. The public's response was immediate and sympathetic, compelling the police to take more decisive action. The investigation, now in full swing, uncovered the first major twist, the reported burst pipe and the neighbor's call to Jamal were both fabrications. This revelation deepened the mystery around the wet towels and the abandoned state of the lake house. The last known location of Leah and Jamal's phones was the lake house, and after that, both devices were switched off. Leah's car, found locked and without its keys at the lake house, suggested that she had arrived as planned to surprise Jamal. However, there were no signs of forced entry or theft at the property. Strangely, both Leah and Jamal's personal belongings, including their bags and documents, were missing from the house. It seemed possible that they had decided to return to the city in Jamal's car, but then, what had prevented their return? The police issued a nationwide alert for Jamal's car. This move proved effective when, in a dramatic turn, the car was spotted and intercepted by the police near the Mexican border. Jamal was taken into custody for questioning, raising a myriad of questions. What had happened between the couple's planned weekend at the lake house and Jamal's apprehension near the border? Emily, along with her parents, was gripped by a mix of relief and apprehension. Relief that there was finally a significant lead in the case, and apprehension about what Jamal's involvement in the situation might reveal. The central questions remained unanswered, where was Leah? And what circumstances had led to Jamal being found so far from home, without Leah? As Jamal sat before the police, the change in his appearance was stark and unsettling. The man who was once recognized by his relatively long hair and beard and now sported a completely shaven head and face, as if attempting to shed his identity. His demeanor was equally transformed, gone was the charismatic and sociable man known to the community. In his place was someone who seemed intent on revealing nothing, his face an unreadable mask. 
Jamal's interaction with the police was marked by evasion and silence. His sole statement was a puzzling and incomplete account of the events at the lake house. I was there on Saturday night, went to bed early, and when I woke up on Sunday, Leah's car was there, but Leah was nowhere to be found. This narrative raised more questions than it answered. It seemed implausible that Leah would arrive at the lake house and then vanish without a trace, leaving her car behind. The police probed further, confronting Jamal with the inconsistencies in his story. They knew the burst pipe was a fabrication, yet Jamal offered no explanation. His silence continued when asked about turning off his mobile phone, altering his appearance, failing to contact Leah's family, and his attempt to cross into Mexico. Each unanswered question added layers to the mystery, deepening the suspicion around him. Yet, suspicion alone was not enough. The police faced a conundrum. Jamal's actions, while highly questionable, did not constitute a crime in themselves. Without concrete evidence or a confession, they were at an impasse. The most haunting question remained unanswered. What had happened to Leah? Without a body or any proof of foul play, the police's hands were tied. Jamal, despite the intense and relentless interrogations by the police, remained an enigma. He was unyielding under pressure, consistently reiterating his claim of ignorance regarding Leah's whereabouts. The police, although convinced of his involvement, found themselves in a legal stalemate. Without concrete evidence or a confession, they had no choice but to release him. However, they kept a vigilant eye on him, ensuring he was under surveillance around the clock. In the eyes of the Cedar Grove community, Jamal was already condemned. He faced a daily barrage of hostility and accusation. People openly branded him a murderer, despite the lack of evidence. Jamal's life, once filled with respect and warmth, had turned into a lonely existence marked by suspicion and disdain. Then, unexpectedly, the case took a shocking turn. Leah's bag was discovered in a bus in a city 40 kilometers away from their own. The discovery raised a baffling question, had Leah left the bag there herself? The investigation led to CCTV footage from a nearby shopping center, which revealed images of Leah, unmistakably alive and seemingly well, walking with her handbag. Leah's father, upon seeing the footage at the police station, confirmed without a doubt that it was his daughter. This revelation transformed the nature of the case. The police, now dealing with evidence of Leah being alive and active after her disappearance, decided to step back from the investigation. It was no longer a criminal case but potentially a personal or family issue. However, Leah's family, particularly Emily, was left reeling with disbelief and confusion. How could Leah, who had vanished so mysteriously, now appear in a city miles away, seemingly of her own volition? Why had she not contacted anyone? Was she in some kind of trouble, or had she chosen to disappear? The discovery of Leah alive, yet seemingly choosing to stay hidden, opened a Pandora's box of questions. Emily, driven by a mix of relief and unresolved angst, knew that the search for answers was far from over. The family's quest to understand Leah's actions and motivations had taken on a new, perplexing dimension. The community of Cedar Grove, once united in sympathy for Leah's disappearance, now found themselves divided in their theories and speculations. The story of Leah and Jamal, a tale that had begun as a love story, had morphed into a complex narrative of mystery, disappearance, and now, apparent abandonment. Emily, driven by an unwavering determination to uncover the truth about her sister, made a personal visit to the police station. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss in the video footage of Leah. The police, recognizing her prominence and the public interest in the case, allowed her one final review of the videos before officially closing the case. The footage was grainy and the camera angles far from ideal. The woman in the video, ostensibly Leah, was wearing a cream-colored raincoat and had blonde hair similar to Leah's. At first glance, it appeared to be Leah. However, Emily noticed discrepancies. 
The woman in the video was shorter and had a slightly different build than Leah. This observation, seemingly minor, reignited the investigative spark. The police, now with renewed interest, revisited the evidence. Among Leah's belongings found in the bus was a McDonald's receipt, time-stamped and potentially crucial. The police quickly contacted the specified McDonald's branch, hoping the restaurant's surveillance footage was still available. Their efforts paid off. The McDonald's footage offered a clearer view of the woman in Leah's raincoat. The revelation was startling, the woman in the footage was not Leah but the secretary of Jamal's office. The arrest of Jamal and his secretary Serena marked a pivotal moment in the investigation. Serena, under the pressure of interrogation, quickly unraveled the web of deceit that had shrouded Leah's disappearance. Her confession revealed a sordid tale of infidelity, deception, and ultimately, tragedy. Serena admitted to a long-standing affair with Jamal, a relationship that predated his marriage to Leah. Despite having her own family, she was deeply entangled in this illicit relationship. Jamal, she explained, was also invested in their affair, seeking variety in his romantic life despite his marriage to Leah. The fateful weekend at the lake house was planned under false pretenses. Jamal, aware that Leah was occupied with housework and unable to accompany him, concocted the story of a burst pipe. He and Serena spent the weekend there, a secret getaway marked by romance and carelessness. Their illicit escapade took a horrific turn on Saturday night. As they enjoyed champagne in the hot tub, lit by the glow of candles, Leah unexpectedly appeared. Serena described Leah's reaction as one of shock and silence, a stark contrast to Jamal's violent response. In a moment of panic and aggression, Jamal attacked Leah, strangling her in a fit of uncontrolled rage. Serena recounted her own fear and disbelief as the events unfolded. Jamal, realizing the gravity of his actions, hastily concocted a plan to cover up the crime. Serena was sent away the following day, left in the dark about Leah's fate. Jamal's subsequent attempt to flee to Mexico, Serena explained, was driven by his fear of being caught. His plan to stage Leah's continued existence by using her clothes and leaving evidence in a bus was a desperate attempt to mislead the investigation and create the illusion that Leah had willingly disappeared. The confession sent shockwaves through Cedar Grove. The community, which had once admired and respected Jamal, now reeled from the heinous reality of his actions. Leah's family, especially Emily, who had relentlessly pursued the truth, was left to grapple with a mix of vindication and profound grief. The truth about Leah's fate, while bringing closure, was a devastating blow. The case of Leah's disappearance had come to a tragic end, unraveling a story of betrayal, violence, and a desperate attempt to escape justice. Jamal's facade of a loving husband and respected professional had crumbled, revealing the darkness that lay beneath. The End Elam Gorishi, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this story, please consider subscribing and giving it a like. Your support means a lot. Thank you.